Hello and welcome to the next project. Now, this is a 148 scale Hawker Fury by Airfix. And uh, by all accounts, from what I've gathered on YouTube and from other modelers who've uh, attempted this uh, kit, it's, uh, it's a very old kit, it's about 40 year old, and apparently it shows it. Um, apparently it's um, covered in flash and it doesn't go together all that well. And uh, it's basically a bit of a frustration to put together but I decided to buy one because uh, although I sometimes buy a kit and I feel confident it's going to be a good one they don't always turn out that way but uh, with this I know where I stand with it so I'm going to give it a go there's very little parts to the kit so there might be a case of me actually showing some hands on um, uh, fettling with it, removing the flash etc rather than um, talking through the instructions and then showing you some spray clips I might actually do some hands on with this so we'll have a look and uh, see how bad this kit is by uh, setting up the camera and taking a look in the box so uh, I'll see you in a minute right let's have a look in the box I've already had a ganders at this because uh, it's got such a bad reputation I wanted to make sure that none of the mouldings were bent because if they were I was going to send it back but uh, I've had a look and uh, yes they're covered in flash but uh, they seem pretty straight now these instructions um, Airfix haven't even updated uh, their instruction leaflet here which is pretty poor really I mean this dates back to um, you know back in the days when I was uh, running around with a runny nose it uh, it's pretty poor and you thought that um, Airfix would have uh, updated their instructions we've got the color schemes here I should be doing the camouflage um, color because uh, I'm expecting this to be full of filler and uh, spraying it aluminium it just highlights any discrepancies so uh, I'd rather um, go for the camouflage scheme so instructions um, pretty poor I've got one clear piece of uh, plastic which is a windscreen so that's the only clear part I've got and now we come to this mess here I don't know if you can see that but there's flash all the way around the perimeter of that uh, rear wing and look at the flash Danny, it's even got flash on the um, sprue this is old tooling, it's worn out I, I think FX ought to uh, take this off the market because it's not doing their reputation a lot of good there's probably a father and son outfit out there who wants to get into the hobby and uh, they go ahead and buy something like this and they're highly disappointed it's uh, not a good example really to entice people to the hobby the wing struts we got the fuselage yeah it's fell off anyway but um, you know it's it's pretty bad and that all those holes aren't clear either but everything seems to be straight in the way of the wings or rather they, they do have a diedral on them but that's um, that's how they're molded but uh, there's nothing twisted in or anything um, there again you look like around along the edge there I mean it, it's, it's nothing major to put right but um, it really it's uh, it's at its day Join the airfix curb now, not if you're making crap like this, no, no. Um, decals, uh, these are probably dating from the same era, uh, they're probably very thick. Um, I do use decal fix to uh, soften these up so that they uh, actually pull tight on the, on the actual mouldings. So uh, they're not the best of uh, decals. Uh, the registration looks alright on them the alignment but uh, yeah and a bit of tissue paper that's to uh, wipe your eyes with when you've opened the box and started crying 
So, there we are. I know what I've bought. I know it's going to be um, very taxing to get a decent model out of it, but I'm going to give it a go. So there we are. Right, let's set up and uh, see what the instructions are uh, informing us to start with. Okay, so this is the first page of the instructions. It tells you a bit about the actual plane. I'll cross-reference my paints to do this particular colour scheme here. This is showing Humbrol Humbrol paints, the Humbrol colours. I've cross-referenced them to me model air, so I know I've got the paints. So it's a case now of seeing what the build consists of here. Right. They're saying about this prop assembly now I've already got a problem before I've even started putting this thing together because I can't find this the sprues empty the bags empty the box is empty I've checked me um, bench here and the floor thinking it might have fell out while I was doing the inbox review but this part is missing so I've decided to address that when I get to the end of the build so it meant um, doing these um, sub-assemblies here regarding the engine um, the cam shaft and the uh, cam covers here and also the pilot and the cockpit area regarding the floor the seat and the other bits and pieces now normally I would uh, paint these figures out of the cockpit I've decided to leave this one in I shall paint it in situ so that then led me up to this this is where all those components I've just shown you need to be uh, glued into the actual fuselage so the fuselage halves can go so can go together now I've obviously spent a lot of time removing flashing things on these moldings particularly along here these here there was a couple of these actual holes blocked up um, I've had to use a little tiny one millimeter drill to uh, remove those uh, um, bits of flash it uh, it wasn't that successful it's not brilliant they're supposed to be rectangular but using a drill they've ended up being oval but these six horse uh, outlets will probably hide it so that's what I've done so far so here we have the fuselage two halves as you can see I've cleaned them up really well um, it's taken a lot of time but there, there's the holes there that I've done um, I've sort of um, removed most of the flash with a knife um, and then I've sort of uh, just gone over it with this um, th I'll talk to you about this uh, later on I uh, was planning on showing you some uh, deflashing on this kit on this particular build um, I will do but not on these small parts I shall wait until the wings are ready to be glued on and I'll show you some clips then of me deflashing the wings um, because uh, every single component here needs deflashing. The other half, much the same as the other half, uh, this particular part of the fuselage or was it the other one? Um, I think it was this part here, This there was a build up of plastic down here, tool damage and uh, it was thick as well and I had to be very careful there but this one here wasn't too bad uh, it's cleaned up all right so now we've got to, to this stage here where we've got the pilot and the in the seat and the cockpit floor um, this will probably be um, sprayed uh, before I put it into the fuselage halves um, and also the engine here that's uh, that was um, painful that was getting the flash off that and getting things to line up it was uh, pretty poor actually this is where the prop was supposed to go so that's where we are with the uh, parts here now um, I shall uh, go ahead and get that uh, stuff primed and painted and uh, the next clip you'll see me with the two halves of the fuselage together 
ready for the next stage so uh, I'll chat to you then right I've got the fuselage halves glued together and I just thought I'd quickly go through with you what I've actually done I've hand painted this um, pilot I haven't made a, a great deal of fuss about it because all you can see is the upper part of his body and the back of the chair so along with the fuselage internals I've given those a coat of green paint but to be quite honest you can't see it anyway so where I was going to start spraying all this lot I've ended up hand painting it because it's such a small amount to uh, apply paint to it ain't worth setting my airbrush up so that was successful uh, this skid thing here um, I had to glue as well the actual cockpit console here I've left that off because same thing again you cannot see that when the two halves are together and I ain't gonna spend time um, trimming it gluing it um, detailing it if you can't bloody see it it's a waste of time the exhaust outlets uh, glued okay and there any trouble with those and they do look a bit better now that uh, they're in, in place and uh, hiding the uh, discrepancies with the uh, molding there uh, the engine went in actually most of it actually went to, went uh, went together all right I never had a lot of problems with it um, it's just a bloody shame about this flash anyway it's it's drying at the moment and I thought I'd show you it I've actually strapped it up with some Tammy and masking tape um, at the moment um, it's looking like there's a, a fair bit of alignment here I'm gonna to have to trim that there and on the front here but other than that that uh, that fuselage went together um, just as easy as a normal one really um, so uh, the actual uh, way this goes together there's not a problem with it but it's just the actual uh, uh, quality of it so uh, that's going to be um, left for a good three or four hours as point as me trying to work on that uh, you'll also notice I never bothered with painting the engine pointless in that it's going to be covered over um, waste of paint so there we are so what I plan to do now is to sort of um, get a wing here and I'll go through with it how I go about removing the flash uh, we've got to trim that off that's a little nib from where it's broke off the, the sprue I never cut that but uh, this has got some flash running around the outside of it I, you can see that's jagged so first thing I'm going to do is uh, use a knife to uh, remove that now what I have here is a homemade uh, abras abrasive really tool. Um, this is made up of uh, a bit of thin aluminium with a bit of rubber either side and just normal wet and dry paper and everything's held together with double sided tape. So whenever that gets worn I can peel it off and put another piece on. So uh, that's something I make, I don't bother buying them. If I want something flexible I use this. These things are what you can buy in supermarkets. I think they're about a pound for a pack and you get about eight in the pack. You can use this uh, to rub down your, uh, your models and you can also do what I've done here. This is 400 grade wet and dry. Again, double sided tape just to, to the sponge and it's more flexible and you can um, actually rub down um, rounded areas and it uh, alleviates the uh, problem of uh, flattening and molding off so that's uh, something I use I also peel one of these off a sponge oh buddy camera and I use it, use it on its own sometimes that comes in handy as well but this is sort of uh, to get rid of the marks made by the wet and dry I've got a block here that I use sometimes when a uh, molding needs facing off I just lay it on there maybe one or two drags across it and it will uh, level it out and um, it comes in handy that I use that a lot uh, just usual files I've got a flat one and a round one here 
and me cutters I use are obviously a, a flush back up here so that I can uh, cut the components off the sprue really tight um, and that's about it really so uh, normally if there's more flash on uh, on the actual molding um, I tend to sort of scrape it with a knife like this but I've decided to use this this wing is actually straight all the way along so it don't uh, it doesn't matter about the um, fact that it's curved or anything I think you can see that now it's it's a vast improvement now just running that over it it's a bit more than that in there by the looks of it and there we go and then to uh, sort of uh, just remove the scratches there I can rub that over there see how the sponges actually form into the shape of the molding got a little bit there in the center I think it's a sprue entry I think I keep knocking the uh, camera here. oh that's better so uh, that's basically what I do when I join two wing halves together which I don't need to do here um, the glue normally oozes out so I always uh, use this sort of method to remove any glue that's uh, oozed out from the um, gluing process As you can see, uh, I've run my finger along there, it's really nice. You can see that I haven't done it there. You can tell just by running your finger over it. Yeah, it's lovely that. Yeah, that's lovely. I'm just going to have a look underneath. Me. Oh, bloody trouble trying to do things. Uh, show show you things when um, I've got the camera moving, um, running rather. Yeah, I can just see there's a little bit more flash needs to come off there. Yeah, that's better. I've got a magnifying lamp here. I can't do without that. My eyes are terrible nowadays. Well, I'm impressed with that, the way that's cleaned up. Right, the other thing we've got to do. Eject the pin marks. I'd like to get rid of those and that's just a matter of using some filler. Now the filler I use is this stuff. This is actually a brand new tube. I see they've altered the tubes. These things used to come in a smaller um, tube and a very wide one. And they gave you a bloody great big uh, nozzle which was ridiculous. But nowadays they, they, uh, they've gone I want to put them in this and they give you a little tiny nozzle to screw on so they've improved uh, improved this a lot and you get the same amount as well I've never tried anything other than this um, it was just period by chance that I chose it when I started um, started modeling and uh, I think the general consensus is this is the best stuff out there 
so uh, this is what I use and I shall uh, apply a bit on these ejector pins and uh, rub them down so uh, that's it that's a little bit of fettling that I've shown you there I'll probably show you a bit more later on but that's the tools I use if I can make them myself I will I, I don't uh, I don't get roped in by these modeling products because uh, it can make the uh, hobby a bit expensive so stuff like this you know cost neck well pence right that's it then I'll uh, I'll see you when the fuselage is ready to be uh, um, worked on with the wing so see you then right so this is uh, had plenty of time to dry now I'm gonna remove the tape and uh, have a gander to see what the uh, seams are like keep knocking this bloody camera Right, let's have a look. Right, there's a, a high spot there. It's level on the top there. And there's a bit of a high spot running along there. But it seems to uh, disappear further along you go. So it looks like what I'm going to have to do here is rub that down. And if there's any gaps I'm going to have to uh, apply some um, filler. Well, obviously, filler is going to be needed there because it's a bit gappy. Um, and this along here, this this is um, it's practically perfect. So it must be something to do with the mode because if that's got a high spot there, you expect this to be too low, and it's not. yeah so we'll have to do that um, I'll just show you the, the wings I've um, filled the uh, holes where the uh, ejector pins created a divot that seemed all right right I think what I'll do first is give this a rub down I'm gonna go and uh, do that off camera and then I'll come back and uh, show you the uh, filling process so I'll see you in a minute right so I've managed to sort of dress these seams the top one was fine there's nothing wrong with that the bottom ones I think are going to need some filler now I don't think that seam there requires any filler and this here is going to be hidden so there's a gap running around the nose here so I'm going to put a bit of filler in there, maybe a bit on that nose. And as for the rest of it, I don't think it needs it. So, that filler I was uh, telling you about earlier, I uh, dispense it in this bottle because I find it a lot easier to use. This is, um, I think this is an old um, Airfix pot, I think. I've got a lollipop stick here that I've squared off the end and put a bevel on it. I find that works really nice. So it's a case now of uh, just laying that down. see how that goes, might have to do a bit more um, yeah so I'm going to leave that to dry and then we'll get back to that I've uh, cleaned up around this area here it was out of alignment I find that rather odd that it's so far out here yet it's lined up here crap tooling that's all it's down to 
Right, I'm going to leave that then and uh, I'll see you in the next clip. Right, this is where I use my stick again. Now that's uh, separated from the actual seam, I can just run this oh, stick over there. It doesn't damage the plastic then. Get the majority of it off. Right, and I think. We are there. Look at that, lovely. Now, I decided to do this bit here as well because I thought it was being hid, but it's not. So, There we are. Lovely filler that. Look at that. Beautiful. Right then. I progressed a little more. I gave in in the end and ran some filler along there and it did take some actually so I'm glad I've done that. Um, I've done the underneath there, the little bit there that uh, needed uh, filling. Um, I've just noticed a bloody hole there now on the, on the skid. I'll do that later. Anyway, the bottom wing has been uh, glued onto the fuselage along with the undercarriage here and uh, you saw me deflashing that and the undercarriage I, I've uh, spent a lot of time on as well and I'm happy with the way it's turned out the worst scenario is uh, when you're trying to fettle this plastic that it breaks in your hand but uh, I'm happy with the way it's going at the moment I'm going to leave this overnight and tomorrow evening I'll be coming back home and uh, We'll go on to the next stage, which I think is probably the uh, engine cover here. And I've just done a troll fit on it, and although it doesn't have any flash on it, it's uh, a dreadful fit. So I think that might be my next uh, part of the job, is to uh, glue that tomorrow and get it fettled and blended in nicely. So uh, I'll see you then. Right, I've left this overnight and the uh, wing is glued successful and uh, the undercarriage as well there seems to be a bit of a gap down inside there which I might end up just running some glue in actually rather than try and fill it that side's uh, absolutely perfect that 
the underneath of the wings here I'm not too sure whether I'm supposed to feel these or not uh, and I'm not too sure about this whether this is supposed to be left um, what I'm gonna have to do is um, have a look at the instructions and see if there's anything going to be glued there but the other thing I've done there's two moldings there's this one here that I've glued on and this front caroling engine caroling um, as you can see it's dreadful awful gap down there and uh, these are the guns and I've lined up the flutes of that side but this side look how far it's out so um, it's uh, it's going to take some doing that to uh, sort of um, fettle because I, I've got to uh, fare this uh, fuselage in um, because it's it, it's uh, it's not gappy but it's uh, it's not fitting right so I've got to be careful as well these exhausts so uh, I'm a bit a uh, bit dubious about rubbing it down but I've, I've got to do something with it because at the moment that's bloody awful so I'm gonna go off camera and uh, apply me filler and uh, have a go at uh, tidying that up and then I'll be back uh, hopefully with it looking a lot better well I feel as if I've uh, attempted to try and clean this up by filling the uh, gaps and things um, it's been okay it's been successful but it's not brilliant I mean you can see how much filler I put on this uh, front molding here and the bit around the back there it uh, it was bloody awkward because I was worried about catching the uh, exhaust outlets here as well. I had to go about it uh, very carefully. Anyway, that uh, that now will have to suffice. I can't do much more than that. I had to re-glue the undercarriage because I snagged it and it broke uh, on this point here. I've ended up super gluing it and using some baking powder. Now, my baking powder I keep in this. This is a vape bottle I scrounge off the guys at work. This basically acts as a puffer bottle. And if you apply some of this and some super glue, it can give you a really nice bond. And it's uh, it's a lot stronger than uh, just uh, gluing the surfaces. So I applied a bit of that around these two areas here and here and here I've glued the wheels on it's something I don't normally do but I find that uh, if I didn't put these on I'm gonna end up snagging it again so I think it's alleviating the fact uh, of it being broken again looking back at the build I think I'd uh, probably do a different procedure but uh, there we go right um, I've laid some glue down into that uh, root part there of the wing and now we're basically ready to uh, assemble and glue the tail plane because what I want to do I want to try and get this to the stage where the upper wing is off and then I want to spray it and I intend to glue the upper wing to the bottom wing rather than the other way around that they're showing so uh, I want to try and get this um, sort of 90% complete so that I can uh, um, give it a primer and do all the uh, necessary camouflage etc. So that's my plan of action. So I've uh, taken the tail plane and the rear wing off the sprue. Um, this is going to be uh, a case of scraping it with my knife. This is flat at the back here, so we'll do this like we did on the bigger wing. Like so, but this area is here. They are uh, proper awkward.
Right. There we go. Do for that. Seems all right. Yeah, not too bad that. Yeah, that'll do me. I think that uh, that'll be fine. That right. I'm going to go ahead and glue that off camera. I think this is going to be at a slight angle. I don't know why. I'll have a look at the instructions. But there's a bit more fettling done. Right. See you in the next clip. Right, I'm just going to backtrack through the instructions because I'm at the stage now where I'm ready to give the airframe a coat of primer. So we've uh, we've still left the prop off, and um, it looks like I might be able to get away with gluing this to the end of the nose of the fuselage. So uh, this part here that was missing, I don't think it's going to make any difference. Uh, all this is all been done. The uh, cockpit area. Um, anything else uh, I left those um, decals off and the uh, um, cockpit detail didn't bother with that this is all being done this is the undercarriage uh, we are here now and all this stuff that's highlighted such as these um, supports for the upper wing uh, are not going to be glued at the moment because what I intend to do is to uh, spray this with the upper wing missing and I'm hoping to uh, glue the upper wing to the bottom wing once it's been painted I find it a lot easier than what they're suggesting here having their plane upside down to mate up with the top wing so uh, all these parts here are going to be left off obviously the windscreen uh, pointless putting that on I'd only, I'd only have to mask it up again the prop won't be on there um, it's showing you here about uh, joining the uh, lower and upper wing that obviously is going to be left as I've just said what else is there these supports I put on the undercarriage when it broke to give it some support stop it breaking again the wheels were on again I put the wheels on the undercarriage to stop it from snagging the tailplane and fin um, that 
glued on okay but these supports here are absolute bloody rubbish this um, this this here this support here it's, it's saying it's got to pass through the fuselage I don't know how it's supposed to do that because there's nothing for it to go through so I've ended up um, cutting it at its uh, apex there and just gluing where they suggested these these ends of the uh, supports and then just laying them against the fuselage I've had to cut them back a little bit and the same with these these here supports there's another set of supports here they don't fit they're too long and uh, I don't know why because um, I can't influence the seating of that wing that, that wing's gone on, on exactly where it's supposed to it's not uh, it's not sitting um, on an angle or anything so why these are too long I don't know but again I cut them off and I managed to locate them where they're supposed to uh, what else is there oh that's it basically so this is where we are folks we've got the upper wing here which I intend to obviously spray uh, alongside the fuselage and here's the fuselage all done here are those wing supports underneath um, I showed you the uh, tailplane being fettled I overlooked the uh, ejector pin marks so I've had to fill those um, I've done some filling around here that you're aware of and I've um, done the super glue and um, baking powder trick with the undercarriage to make it more stronger uh, all I've got to do now is put some cotton wool around the cockpit area to stop the uh, paint from going on the figure and inside the cockpit um, and that should be it so uh, I shall set up my spray booth and we'll give this a coat of primer and see if it's going to flag up any more gaps now these gaps you see here are for the support so uh, I'm not bothered about that but I don't know what sort of gap we're, we're, we're looking at once they've been glued I'm taking a risk here because um, I suppose ideally I should be spraying this completely with the with the upper wing on but I've tried doing that before and I've come across problems so this is the uh, um, procedure I'm going to go through so I'll see you in a minute regarding the uh, spraying of the uh, primer well welcome back now I've had a hell of a game applying this primer this stuff is uh, frustrating to use I've tried this in both my airbrushes and I will get say sort of halfway across the wing and uh, it would start blocking up and I went through three color changes on both um, airbrushes and it would not spray properly I have trouble with this stuff tomorrow if I put this into my airbrush and spray something it would probably spray perfect I've got no answer as to why this stuff is unreliable um, I'm using the same air pressure I'm using the same sort of airbrushes I normally use uh, I don't think temperature's got anything to do with it I think it's just bloody unreliable so I use this here this is a primer which is a makeup of this surface primer but I've added an 057 black to it to create a dark primer I use dark primers when I spray metallics like uh, aluminiums because uh, apparently it uh, it can influence the uh, top coat your primer and it's always best to use uh, well preferably a black one but I haven't got a black primer so this is a dark grey primer and I have actually uh, ended up spraying this airframe and the wing and the prop with this primer it went on no trouble whatsoever um, no issues with it I left it overnight and I've just come back and had a look over it it's flagged up some glue runs which I've addressed and I've uh, rub those glue runs down done a little bit more filling 
and I've just blown it over again so uh, at the moment it's still a little bit uh, not tacky but it's not quite hardened yet so next stage is to spray the underneath the underneath of the wing and the underneath of the airframe with this 101 which is a light blue I'm not going to mask the uh, airframe up I'm just going to spray this and then um, obviously the darker colors on top um, they will uh, obviously co uh, co cover this so I'm not all that bothered about um, masking the top part of the fuselage up I shall then mask the uh, the upper and lower sort of um, lines on the fuselage to then spray it um, I suppose I'm going to do it brown I'll give it a blanket spray of brown which is this 323 and then I will mask it up to do the green cam camouflage so that's my plan of action I'm hoping to uh, show you some footage of the spraying I did do some well I, I say some I had about um, 15 minutes of footage because the, the camera I started and uh, I started getting problems with the uh, airbrush and the paint and uh, the camera was just left running and I really can't be asked to uh, edit all that amount out so uh, I haven't bothered um, showing you the uh, spraying of this of the primer so there we are with this and uh, that's where I'm gonna head off to now I'm gonna spray the underneath and um, leave it overnight and hopefully tomorrow I can uh, blanket spray the brown so uh, I'll see you then
Well, there she is, folks. Now, oh, I am glad that this is all over. It's uh, it's a kit that uh, probably, out of all the kits I've made, I don't think I'd ever buy another one. Even though I probably change the procedures and things, um, I still wouldn't go near it. I think the tooling's at it. It's at its day. But it did have its moments of inspiration. It did go together sometimes okay. Um, surprisingly enough, that upper wing go, joining to the bottom wing, I've never built a biplane yet that where the wings have uh, um, joined up absolutely perfect. I had no issues or trouble um, lining that upper wing up with the bottom one. All the um, supports went where they were supposed to have. And... Uh, that that was a joy to do. I was expecting to uh, be cussing and swearing at it. Now the wing supports and the prop has been sprayed with a uh, Humbrol um, leather colour, 62. I wanted to try and recreate something that looked like wood. I think I've managed to do it with the prop, so I decided to follow the theme through with the wing supports. They really should have been uh, either green or brown. I don't normally spray Humbrol paints but because it was uh, just some small parts I managed to get away with it but I must admit the uh, airbrush struggles with it. The pigments aren't uh, ground down fi fine enough and uh, I find uh, Humbrol paints a pain in an airbrush but it's done, uh, done what I wanted it to do. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else. Um, the decals, uh, I'm not too keen on the decals. I think overall the thing looks too what I would call toy like it doesn't look like a model and the um, decals don't do it any favor either I never had any trouble applying them they seem to um, sort of adhere to the fuselage because uh, I've got quite a lot of ribbon effect on here but the uh, using the decal fix it's actually uh, pulled the decals tight so that's all right this tailplane decal and the one on the other side, that's a joke. That was about, well, it was nearly about three millimeters um, out. I had to trim that. And I used a sharp knife and it didn't do a very good cut at all. Uh, it looks a bit, uh, bit rough that, but um, the decal was oversized. Uh, the windscreen's been glued on using my usual PVA. Um, and I don't think there's anything else I can talk about really I think that's it so thanks for watching I hope to uh, get another um, kit build up on me um, channel I've actually got another airfix kit but uh, I do believe it's um, modern, modern tooling with with the one I'm about to do so uh, let's see how good airfix are with their modern tooling see if they're a match for Tamiya so that's it then folks there we go and uh, I'll probably see you again soon so take care